to Able Laboratories. Let's go in and look at uh, one of the more expensive Reynolds number examples I've got. Must be on the fourth floor. So, here's an example. Check out this flow. No, come on in. Check it out. You notice that the flow is very clear. It's laminar. Everything's moving in the same direction. You can actually see through it. But as it goes faster and faster, it gets more turbulent. More turbulent. Here you got white water, right? That's turbulent flow. Not all the flow is coming down. It's getting mixed in different directions. It's incorporating air with it. And I go back down. It transitions back to laminar. So what does that? It's something called the Reynolds number. Uh, Osborne Reynolds came up with this in the very early 20th century. He's trying to determine what factors go into making a flow laminar or turbulent. So let's check it out. So the Reynolds number is given by RE. It's not even a subscript, it's just a capital R and a little e. And it's the ratio of things that make flow turbulent to things that make flow laminar. So let's say I've got flow over a a Lamborghini or a pickle with tires. Not sure. It's moving in here and as the flow moves over, if you're going slow enough, it'll stay laminar. But if you go faster, things happen. If it's going faster than this flow as it comes up, it's going to not make that turn and it's going to smash into the other flow. It's going to crash into it and it's going to produce turbulence. The heavier the molecules are, just like the heavier the, the running back is, the more they're going to smash into the accompanying flow and the more disturbance they're going to make. So Reynolds number is a product on top. The things that drive the turbulence are the density. The more dense it is, the more likely it is to go turbulent. The faster it's going, the more likely it is to cause a disruption in there and produce eddies. Density and velocity. And finally, the longer it flows, the more time it has to develop turbulence. So there's a characteristic length or size for turbulence to develop. All those go into making flow turbulent. What keeps it laminar? It's the ability of the fluid to stick to itself. Like uh, one, ob one example of a solid object, it's, everything sticks to itself very well. And so as it moves, it all moves together. As you get more and more malleable, more fluid-like, they don't stick together as well and they'll tend to go turbulent. So the viscosity is how sticky the material is with respect to itself, how much it hangs together. And that's given by a mu, different than the coefficient of friction, but that's the viscosity. So let me write those things down. Mu is viscosity, different than density, the ability of the material to stick together. And uh, V is the velocity. Rho is the mass density. And D is a characteristic length. And it depends on the different form. For uh, an airplane wing, it's from the, the cord, from the front of the wing to the back. For a pipe, it's the diameter of the pipe. So characteristic length. Okay. Everything on the top drives you towards turbulence. Everything on the bottom makes the flow laminar. So let's do an example. Just give you a chance to see all that so you can pause it and make sure you've got it all. All right. So we'll do an example. And we'll do water flow through a tube, through a duct. A circular duct. 
I'm gonna say the speed of this stuff is it's H2O. I'm gonna say the speed is um, excuse me. Let's say the speed is 10 feet per second, and let's say the diameter is two feet. If it was if it was in inches, I'd have to convert it to feet because the Reynolds number has no units. You know, maybe if you're doing your notes, you should put this down. It's dimensionless. So I've got 10 feet, uh, let's say I've got a two foot diameter. And uh, for water, I believe the density of, mass density of water is about 1.94 slugs. I'm not doing weight density, I'm doing mass density. Slugs per cubic foot. And, uh, and the viscosity of water is, I think it's something like 2.12 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, slugs per foot per second. So what I'll do is, we'll make sure that we calculate the Reynolds number, we'll see what it means, we'll make sure the units cancel. The Reynolds number is rho, mass density, times velocity, times distance, over the viscosity. In this case, it's 1.94 slugs per foot cubed times the velocity of 10 feet per second times the characteristic length, the diameter, which is 2 feet. So you can see we've talked about this earlier. The bigger the diameter of the pipe, the more it's going, more tendency it has to be turbulent. Uh, think of it in terms of like uh, capillary, blood capillary. We don't have enough room for one cell. There's no way they can be, no way it can develop any turbulence at all. But as you get wider and wider, it can move back and forth a little more. And that's divided by 2.12 times 10 to the minus 5 slug per foot per second. I'm going to let you do the calculation. Just on an average, this is going to be, let's see. It's going to be about 2 million. You can check this number. Yeah, looks pretty good. It'll be like, you know, like 197 million or something. I mean, 1.97 million, something like that. But it's 2 million. Let's see what happens to the units. The slugs cancel. I've got feet times feet. I've got feet squared on the top and feet cubed on the bottom. So I'll have one foot left after I cancel those two. I got one over feet here and one over feet here. I read all my feet and I got one over seconds and one over seconds. I have no units. The Reynolds number has no units. What does the two million mean? Here's the criterion that Osborne Reynolds came up with. If the Reynolds number is less than 2,000, it means you've got laminar flow. Right? Because the bigger it is, this is the turbulent part. The bigger the Reynolds number is, the more turbulent you're going to get. If the Reynolds number is between 2,000 and 4,000, we say we've got transitional flow. It's somewhere in between. I and mean, this is just a guideline, right? There isn't some point where it just automatically goes. Uh, there's some chaos in there. Finally, if the Reynolds number is greater than 4,000, you've got turbulent flow. And the higher the Reynolds number, the more turbulent the flow. This is the criteria we use to determine turbulence in a system, the Reynolds number.